All right, so we're going to be showing, or I'm going to show you how to uh, change out your water pump on the uh, 225 here. Essentially, you're going to have to remove the whole lower unit, which is going to be from here down. This is a spacer I have just because of the engines needing to go farther in the water. But uh, essentially, we're going to have to take off the propeller first to get at one of the nuts here, uh, or bolts, and then all of these nuts. So first thing we're going to have to do to take off this castle nut is pull off this. little guy off. Well I got my 27. Just gonna put the 2x4 essentially any you can get bigger blocks but the 2x4 just get the propeller locked up against it and then we're gonna grab a big cheater bar if you need but okay ratchet was stuck on there a little bit just trying to get uh a little bit of rust on the castle nut, but not too bad. Thrust washer, and then your propeller should slide right off. And you may have another thrust washer here, but that should stay in place. I already loosened this one. This is a 15 mil. I'm gonna need to get that off. And in here, there's gonna be a 19 you're gonna have to loosen. And then I'll take you around the side. There's gonna be six nuts. Okay, so here are the three on the one side, and we'll go right to the other. There are the other three. And way up back in there is that 19 mil. So as soon as we take this last, I already removed these three nuts, the same three nuts on the other side. I've got my 19. As soon as I remove this one last one way up in here, this is going to want to slide out. Most of the time it wants to slide out. Every once in a while you may need a rubber mallet to slam it. But for the most part, it's not that heavy. I guess 50, somewhere between 50 to 60 pounds maybe at the most. It's just awkward. It's got a long shaft that comes from here that reaches all the way up into your engine. So you just got to make sure that you're going to pull down and that you got your engine high enough. Otherwise, if it's aimed at the ground, you're going to drop it. Realize you can't angle the long shaft out of there. Uh, so angle it up a little bit. Had to get an extension. Rubber mallet. All right, you can see I got it off. Eventually what was happening is I was having, you guys probably won't have this, a lot of people don't have spacers on your home boats, but uh, I was getting a space in here and then a space uh, back here on this one. So it was space between here and the gear case, but the spacer and the engine were having a space here. So I kept having to knock it up here and then down on the other one is what you saw. But eventually it came free. Basically you just want to set it down somewhere you can work on it, put your blankets down, whatever. All right, so your water pump housing is this thing right here. That one's actually looking good. We uh, just gonna open it up. This is a 12 mil. All right, just getting this final bolt out. Um, one thing I was gonna mention is we have these little pins. I'm gonna show you real quick. If you look at these little pins right here, these are the things that they kind of tend to stick and that's what usually you have to pound out. It's not necessarily the bolt, it's not that you have a lot of corrosion along these surfaces. There's another pin that'll go in right here. If you look, you can see that's where some of it built up around that bolt. But these two tiny little pins, the other one is uh, obviously in the part, other part of the gear case, but these pins are the things that'll make it really hard to stick out. So that's really where you need to focus on. Okay, so this should just want to come up. All right, and there is our impeller. As you can see, it's time to change this one. You see all that black in here? This is the kind of stuff you don't really want ending up in your cooling system. This one, we happened to have it running while it was not getting enough water, so it ended up burning part of the impeller. So we'll change out our impeller. Also, don't lose this little key. The key is gonna fit just on the inside, right like that, to hold it. And that's what actually drives it, because it's just this flat part rotating 
with the key on the flat part and that little groove going up in the middle here. Okay, so this is your shift shaft right here. This is obviously your main propeller shaft. Uh, there's the key. Now, if you need to get in here, if you're going to do work, like maybe your gear case is leaking, you're gonna have to take the shaft out, which I can do in another video if there's enough interest, but essentially you're gonna have to take this off. This metal, I usually have plenty of backup, so I'll take like a whole impeller kit with the impeller, got uh, spare gaskets, I even have the uh, spare metal ones in the bottom. Uh, you're gonna probably have to bend this because if you wanna get it off of these, there's so much corrosion that happens around these little pins. Again, that's usually what you're banging on to try to get this whole gear case off in the original part is these two, these little shims. I would recommend buying some of these if you're gonna buy the kit. Just get these tiny little alignment pins uh, for all of these. I think they're all the same part number because <clears throat> these get so corroded, these are end up gonna be your problem for getting these things off. I ended up having to uh, heat it up and burn these gaskets, but again, just get the whole impeller kit um, which doesn't come with some of the gaskets, so watch out if you're looking at that. Um, anyway, this, all we're doing is replacing it. This plate looks fine, the gasket looks fine. Again, we just got it a little hot. I'm gonna put in uh, a different impeller, and I did lube up this with a little bit of grease, so just take some marine grease, any dielectric, whatever. Uh, I cleaned off a lot of that black that was in here, as you can see, because we don't want it ending up in our cooling system. So what you wanna do, is find your key, well, your, your hole. So you're gonna know that this is the bottom because that's where you've got this little groove. And if you look, this top right here doesn't have anything on the top. There's no key alignment on the top, just the bottom. So that's gonna be your bottom. Whole thing is gonna go on. And just line it up. And then as this piece goes on, you're going to want to spin this clockwise. So I'm pushing down as I spin it clockwise. There we go. And then you just got to put your four bolts back in. One thing I was going to touch up on, if you could, see all this corrosion right here? Just take a wire brush and clean the threads. These were a little hard to get out. They're not impossible. I don't necessarily recommend never seizing. You could put a little bit on but just get the corrosion out. Another thing I just want to mention real quick, if you're down here, it is worth getting a new water pump housing. If you're gonna replace it, might as well replace the whole thing. Get the gasket that goes right in here on the underside, get the green paper gasket, get the metal gasket, get uh, spare pins like I was saying. Just get all new parts, I'd keep the bolts obviously, and then get a new impeller. Uh, we tend to have the impellers, I change them every two years and it's fine. And we run them almost every day. This one, like I said, just happened to burn up. All right, so I'm just gonna lube this up just a little bit since I've got it. Make sure all these splines are uh, looking good. Just a little bit of marine grease. And since I'm here, I'll probably lube up the shift shaft just a little bit. Okay, so again, this is your shift shaft right here. And one thing I want to point out, if you notice, this is the cruising direction. This is forward, so your boat's moving away from this that way. This flat part, hopefully you can see that. You want this flat part to be going in your cruising direction. If it's tilted a little this way or that way, that means you've got it in gear, which you should know by not being able to turn this. It should be a little more difficult now that your impeller's there, but you should still be able to turn your shaft clockwise mostly that's the way we're turning it so turn it clockwise the other thing is now that we've taken it out these splines are not going to be quite aligned with the engine splines they might be half off so you're going to notice I'm going to be wiggling just a little bit not the you could have someone turn this if you have two people or you're going to notice I'm going to be wiggling the whole gear case slightly just to try to uh, turn that a little bit around all right, well, got my big brush out for this one. You're gonna clean all this corrosion off. Look at that. All right, so if you're alone just like me, I would probably get the one of these nuts, maybe one of these if it's easier, because that way you don't have to reach way up in. 
at least get one nut, maybe two. I'm gonna probably put them over on the other engine, maybe put it on a table around you. So once you get it up and you're by yourself, you can thread a couple of nuts and then leave the project without having to worry about your gear case coming down. All right, this is where we're gonna be real careful. It's a lot easier to have two people for this. You can have someone guide this up for you. Nice and easy. So here's where you're gonna find out if it's aligned or not. See me moving. There we go, my shaft, shaft's aligned. There we go. Now that it's in, I'll use that gravity to help me hold it in place. Or the lack of gravity, I should say. Okay, so I got my two nuts in to make sure no matter what, it can't slide off. They're all threaded a little bit. Notice there's a big gap. I'm probably not gonna be able to close that by hand. I could hammer it, but I'm just gonna let the screws do the work. So gradually I'm gonna tighten all six evenly. Notice I've got an uneven gap up here. It's a little big here, nothing here, big here. Not as much there. Anyway, I'm gonna let the screws just gradually tighten all six, just kind of go in a motion like a circle. Tighten a little bit, tighten a little bit, little bit, little bit, and then just keep going around. It'll gradually suck everything up close and close it all off. All right, so if you have dual outboards, this is the other engine, by the way. If you have dual outboards, notice down here, it's just flat for me, this little plate. Um, if you notice, a lot of these, like see how there's a groove here? It doesn't really matter because mine are flat. If you have fins, that's because you have a single and you need to figure out which one it was on. So before you do this, I should have told you, figure out where this arrow is pointing. Sorry, I misspoke. It was these two arrows. The groove ends up being on the opposite side, but line up these two arrows or figure out where your arrow lines up and how your grooves are gonna be there. Hopefully, you can mark it out somewhere on here to figure out where this arrow on here should go in relation to that one that's permanent on the gear case. All right, so I got a little dab of marine grease here. Just gonna put it on the propeller shaft here, get it all over. One thing to notice, if you ever look at these propeller shafts, see these two lines right here? That's how you know it's counter-rotating. If you're ever curious which gear case you've got, if it doesn't have these two lines right here, it's a uh, regular standard rotation. I mean, some of them have that sticker that'll tell you, obviously. But if you see those two lines right here, so you know you've got a counter-rotating shaft. Shaft's all lubed up, time for the propeller. There should be a thrust washer that's gonna be on here. Mine's, I never took it off. But uh, these can be kind of tricky to get off. They don't fall off easily, so I didn't really care. Anyway, line up the shaft. The other thrust washer for this side. Castle nut's gonna go on. Okay, so it may be hard to see, but there's a little hole that's in this propeller shaft when you tighten it these little castles the reason those are there is so you can put your cotter pin through the castle turret I guess you'd call it through the pin or through the hole on the propeller shaft and then out the other side of both so if you can see that it's lined up right there but it'd be too loose so I'm gonna probably tighten it one more which you'll see me do in a second with a 2 by 4 I'm going to put my cotter pin right back through. Something like that. So that the castle nut, if it does loosen up somehow, this pin's going to keep it, or those little bends outwards are going to keep it from sliding back up, out, and that way the castle nut can't move and you always got nice smooth spinning. And there you go, ready to drop it back in the water and go out another day.